Hello, you guys. It's been a minute. Hello. I pray that all is well today. I don't own the rights to the music. Let me say that now. I don't. I just, I really don't. I don't own the rights to the music. Y'all, let's talk. It's been a minute. This is a little worship, y'all. It's been a minute. It's good to see y'all. Hello. Hi. How are you? God bless you. All right, you guys. You know that I um was on my on my private um, on my private page. If, if you're on my private page, God was giving me a list of things to um post to and um give people encouragement of courage. Okay, and sometimes we need that alone this walk. Things just happen. Life just happens, and sometimes things can be overwhelming. Sometimes you know for us to um digest it all you know and figure it out you know and so that's why we need jesus christ because we can't figure it out in our own ability okay so last night he had me to post a lot of things um last night and as y'all know that i had company so my family came down and so i was spending time with them so that's why i had not been on okay and so um but i would try to get on it and, and post things um um you know as i was going about my day because i did not forget about you guys okay Hey, Brother Danny, God bless you. Um, I love you. Um, It's good to see you. So, yeah, so um, I was doing that, you guys. And um, so we have to be encouraged in the, in the Lord, okay? We have to know that, you know, um, you know, things happen. Life happens. And um, we need the Lord to figure it out. So I thank God for that. Um, it was some other things he had me um, um, post last night. So I just, I thank God for whoever it is for. Um, we know that he does things in his own way. You know, it's not for, for us, but it's, it's for other people. And we share our gifts and our talents and um, the things that he's placed on the inside of us for others. So I thank God for that. So if you're about doing the work, if you're working the field, whatever it is that God has called you to do, if you're doing that, I appreciate you. I thank God for you, for each and every one of us in the body of Christ. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you on today. We just thank you for just being you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for another day. Despite of our circumstances or whatever may be going on concerning us or concerning others or concerning family, we know that you have already worked those things out and we trust in you. And what others may have have not submitted to you and and, and, and is, is serving you and being obedient unto you. We know that we stand in the gap for others, for our family. And so we just thank you that you honor that and that you have favor because of us and our obedience. And we ask that you give us strength, your spirit of might, your knowledge and wisdom and understanding and the fruit of your spirit and to pour the love inside of us so that we may be, uh, uh, continue to reciprocate it. Um, in the lives of others in, in Christ Jesus name and that whatever you have um, um, for us to fulfill and do that we do those things I speak obedience to our flesh and our mind and our spirit by the blood of Jesus Christ that you um, just show yourself strong and mighty and mighty in battle we need you in, in this in this troubled time we need you we need your presence we need a, a fresh feeling of the Holy Spirit um, some of us need to be um, refilled. Some of us need to be poured into. Some of us need a sense of direction. Some of us need a lot of things. And you know the need of each and every one of us. So we ask that you step in on today, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And let your word go forth, Father God. Give us what we need. 
as you begin to use us as your vessels. But it is nothing that we do in our own ability because we have no strength. We have no power. We are all as filthy rags, even in all our righteousness of what we do. So we are nothing, but we are vessels, broken vessels. That is fit for the master use. So we ask that you continue to pour inside of us, Father God. We ask that you continue to lead and guide us. We ask that you continue to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your word be a light unto us, Father God, to be able to see in this dark and evil day. So we thank you on today, Father God. We thank you for continue to do, Father God, continue to provide. We ask that you continue to set free, heal, deliver, and set free, Father. And we ask, Father God, that you look upon those that are sick, look upon the family, one by one and name by name, according to the need, Father. And we ask that you knock on the door, Father God, and fulfill the needs in the mighty name of Jesus. As you fulfill your, your, your leaders, as you fulfill your, your workers, um, their need, our need. So we know that you're a God that you don't lie. Neither the son of man that you repent not. So we believe in, we trust in your word, for we know that it is infallible. And we thank you all today in Jesus Christ's name. I love you guys. And it's been a minute. So I'm out today, you guys. And um, I want to do, I, let me let me say this. I really appreciate all the um. Um, encouragement. I appreciate the testimonies that come in. I appreciate the testimonies that come in. Um, how the ministry is is changing, the the lives, the mindset, and um. So I'm so grateful for that. I just give God all the honor and glory and praise that we are, are praising because it's nothing so great about me. I'm just a a sinful person that's saved by grace. You know, I have no strength. I have no ability, but I thank God that um, he is doing the work. And so it is more to come. It is more to come. We have a lot of ground to, to, to gain. We have a lot of territory to cover. And so I thank God for those that are in are in the body of Christ, that you you know, you're mature. You're eating the strong meat. I thank those that are, are growing up and that you own the milk. I think those that are coming in. Um, those yet to come in. So I just give glory to God for each and every one of us in the body of Christ. I just thank God for just bringing his body from the four corners of the earth and, and shaping and molding us according to his will. Hello, best friend. According to his will. According to whatever it is that he wants to do. So you guys know that we are coming up on perilous times, y'all. This is the beginning of sorrows. This is the beginning. This is the tip of the iceberg. And so we have to get rooted and grounded. One of the posts that I made last night is that um, now is not the time to take off our um, 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 shoes of um, the gospel of peace. And um, I pulled it up last night on what does that mean? Because we have an armor that we have to put on. And um, and we need to know what does that mean. And so let me read it to you guys. And so I know some of you might know, but we got to keep in mind that it's some that don't know, okay? And I know that some people be like, well, she is kind of like all over the place. Well, uh, in the body of Christ, God just have me to do that. Some, some we have to give, we have to um, feed the people. God say feed his sheep according to the need. Some need this, some need that, some need this. Okay? And that's just the way um the father has me on uh, working. But let me read it to you guys. Let me find it and read it to you guys. Because we have to keep on our um shoes, our our our, our shoes. And um we're coming up on some um hard times, you guys. And um the the father would not have us ignorant. So Ephesians um, um, 6 and 11 and to 18, y'all know that that is the armor that we put on um, to fight this spiritual warfare, this battle. And so, um, let me see, let me find it, y'all. Hold on.
So in 15, um, the Amplified Bible says, and having strapped on your feet, the gospel of peace in, in preparation to face the enemy with firm footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. So this is us fighting against the enemy. Okay. And this is how we um, win and defeat him is with the word of God. So every piece of our armor that we put on is for our protection. It is for our defense. Okay. For the opponent, which is Satan and his agents. So I thank God for that. So now it's not the time to take off our shoes. You guys leave your shoes on. I didn't say that for anything because God showed me in a vision that some of us, many of us were taking our shoes off and, and, and some of us was taking our one shoe compromising. Some of us were, were, were being swayed um, um, with the um, um, every do, every wind of doctrine, um, um, the false doctrine of men's tradition and religion. We got to know y'all that it is a um, deception. So we can't take our shoes off. We can't lay our guard down. I don't care what they say about us. I don't care what they. I don't care what they say. Keep your shoes on. Okay, because we're standing on the firm foundation of this word of God. We're standing on the word of God, y'all, and we have to. Okay, the solid foundation. So I thank God for that. So I wanted to. Um, I did want to co cover that. I thank God for the testimonies that are coming in. That um. God is working it out. I had a um, request about um, jealousy. Okay. And I know all well about jealousy. And we got to know that it is real. And it is from the enemy. Okay. And we got to know that it started first with Satan. He was, who was he jealous of? He was jealous of God. Why? Because God, he, he, Heaven is his throne. The earth was his foot. So he was Lord over all. And so Satan wanted the position. So um, he saw the glory and, and the majesty. And he, he saw the, the, the worship that the, uh, the, the, um, the, the heavenly host of angels was, was bowing and giving to him. They were singing his praises just all day long. And, and he wanted a piece of that pie. And so um, jealousy crept in. Rebelliousness crept in. And um, he began to go and plot. Okay, he went and gathered some some folks with him and, and told them, "Listen, y'all, you know, come with me, man. Listen, he ain't do, he ain't doing this and that and that and the third, and I can we can do this, blah blah blah. Come join my team, you know." So he had to go and recruit some people to 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 um 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 help him in his um situation for the demise of of God. But we know that he is God. Satan is a created being. God created him, so he can um. He could decreate him, if the, if you will. You know what I mean. And so that's where it starts from. And so a lot of sometimes it's in us, and we don't know that it's them. That we can somebody can um, obtain a thing or get something, and we we know that they got it. And we can kind of feel a certain type of way. There is a good je um, jealousy at Christ, but then we have the the bad. Okay, and that's um, when people want to hold you down and different things like that. So uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about um, a few of those, you guys. I'm going to run some errands, and then i jump back on a little bit later. But I just want to come and say hello, and I love you guys with the love of Christ. So um, let's go to um, Genesis 30 and 31. We're going to go over a few of these, y'all, and then, then I'll come back a, a little later on. And he said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will, I will again feed thee. I will, get, I will again feed and keep thy flock. Okay. No, no, I'm sorry, y'all. 30 and 1. Hold up, y'all. Sorry, don't y'all don't, don't be mad at me. 30, 30 and 1. Y'all don't be upset with me now. 30 and 1. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister 
and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. So do you see where the, where the problem come in at is where we can look at somebody else and see what they have and want the very, very thing. And we're not um, patient enough to wait until God work our situation out. And some people feel that way that they want what you have and they want what somebody else have. And it's not their time yet. But with prayer and supplications, make your request known unto the Father, okay? But when you look at somebody else and you envy and jealous, uh, um, um, be jealous of what they have, then this is where jealousy um, creeps in at. Okay, so um, I'm going to try to, listen, y'all, I'm going to try to get it right this time. X 13 and 45. But when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and spoke against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Do you hear this? Jealousy is all around us. It's been here for years. It's been here for years. And it can be in your very own family. Okay? Jealousy does not. Jealousy can come from your sister. Jealousy can come from your, your, your brother, your mother. It can come from your father. It can come from anywhere. Because it is a um, subtle um, tactic that uh, it's a poisonous that, that Satan spreads. Okay? So it can come from anywhere. So it leads to um, 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 verbal uh, abuse. It leads to um, physical abuse. It, it leads to a lot of things. Okay? So we have to be very, very careful of that. And uh, I'm going to come back on a little bit later and we'll talk about this a little bit more, y'all. So I know that um, I know that, that was short. I'm going to ride out now. Y'all going to ride with me a little bit. We have to listen. We have to get the sin out of our life. Okay. I posted this last night. Let me back out, y'all, because this, this, this sun is doing something to me. I posted um, um, one of the things from out of my um, daily devotion last night. And so let me read this one this for today. It say we can be free from sin and 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 it say can we be be free from sin and live sinless lives? Yes, we can be saved from our sins, but no, we cannot lead sinless lives. The more we come to, G, to the more we come to know Jesus, the more we recognize those things in our lives that are not in line with Jesus character. Mm -hmm. Our lives on earth are a continual confrontation with sin until the Lord Jesus returns. Do you hear that? I was gonna say, why is my um? I say, why is my thing open? Anyway, our path of purity and holiness is an ongoing one in which we experience Jesus. Then at the bottom, the scripture says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. First John 1 and 7. Jesus said, truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. Mark 3 and 28. So we have to want to listen. We have to want to be free from these things, y'all. We gotta want to be free from um, 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 those characteristics um, that come from Satan. Let me, let me. I started to. No, I'm not. Let me go on, y'all. Anyway, we have to want to be free from that um, thing, y'all, because if we don't, we we die in it. We actually die in it. Do I know about jealousy? I know very well about jealousy. And the person that was telling me about it was just, I mean, they just consumed with it, with, you know, uh, it's, it's an attack on their life. It can come from anywhere. It can come from your coworkers. It can come from family members. It can come from friends. People that you think that, that are not jealous of you are the very ones. And you got to be because it's so subtle. It's so sneaky. They, 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 they pretend to be happy for you. They pretend to be 
you know, celebrating you what in their hearts, they really hate that it is happening to you. And it might not be happening to them. Or that it's finally happening to you and they never want to see you in the position that you are in. I'm telling y'all what God love. I had a family member that was so close and dear to me that I just never knew it for years. I kept wondering why, why, why was I getting mistreated? Why I seemed like I was just getting the bad end of the stick. Until one night something happened. And I went to go and pick the family member up from wherever they called me from. I went to pick them up. And as we were going back home, they just all of a sudden just blurted out that they were just jealous of me. They always been jealous of me because this and that and a third. And I was so shocked and I, I was just so dumbfounded because I was like, I don't understand because everything I ever obtain everything I ever had I will always share I was not a selfish person anything I had you could have had access to it anything I've learned I try to teach you I wanted you to have the very same thing I don't understand where is this coming from and you know it's truly that you know the person have the, those insecurities within themselves really those inadequate things that they feel on the inside they hate you for having the, 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 the ability to do those things that they cannot do to obtain those things they cannot obtain and for whatever reason it is that it is is a blockage there for them and it might be them their own selves sometimes pe we we as people stand in our own way so we never know why the jealousy is there we don't know why this but it is a deadly poison so it's a twofold um um, um killer so it's, it, it kills the person that has it, and it also kills the person that they inflict. When, when, it, when a, a snake bites you, it injects their poison into your veins. And if you don't go and get the antidote for it, the anti-venom for it, you will die. Or your arm will come off, or your feet or leg or whatever be amputated or whatever. So it's a two-fold kill. And if they don't um, um, fix the situation, and sometimes you just have to come away from them. Sometimes you just have to cut ties. Sometimes you just have to just cut the relationship. Love them from a distance. Love them from over across town. Love them from another state. Love them from wherever they are. You can't be in close quarters with them because they'll kill you. And they can't help it because they have the poison inside of them. That's like, I'm going to keep saying this. People are like viruses. A spiritual virus. If you do not protect yourself, if you don't put on your PPP garment, you will be exposed to the virus. You need every piece of equipment. You need your, your mask, you need your gloves, you need your gown, you need your you need all this to be able to go in and be able to uh, assist people. Y'all, this is so serious. Anyway, that's why I had to come on and share today. Okay? And my rare form. That's what I had to come on and share today. Because it is so serious. You could be with a spouse. Can I tell you that? I know a lot of people post pictures that they are just happy, hunky, gory. gory. They just living a the life. They living their best life. But can I tell you that you have some relationships, some marriages that one is jealous of the other? Secretly. It is a poison. It is a sickness. It is a virus. That if you don't deal with it, if you don't deal with it, you will die. So, if you are the person that is uh, releasing this venom, I, I urge you today to go to Christ Jesus. We need Christ Jesus, y'all. We need the Father. Without the Father, we can do nothing. I've read this to y'all several times. Without the Father, we can do nothing, absolutely nothing. We cannot heal ourselves. We can't see the things that we need to see about concerning ourselves unless the Father reveal it to us. We need him. We need him. We need the workers. We need the people that are working the field. Because he's going to use the people that are working the field to help us along the way. And sometimes we have to just face things for what they are. And we have to deal with them. And sometimes that can be hard. Sometimes that can hurt. 
because it's cause it's it's it's, it's causing a, a conflict with inside ourselves. It's causing a confrontation with this inside of ourselves or with other people because now they're saying, "I see this thing in you. I don't like it. It's it's causing me hurt. You know, you're hurting me by doing this by being sick. You're causing me hurt, and it causes a confrontation." And they like, well, I want you to accept me just the way I am. I want to continue to keep abusing you and using you and mistreating you. And you're like, no, I'm not. And because you're going to take a stand to not be abused anymore with their sickness. It caused a conflict. We are in this walk because we are trying to get to Christ Jesus. We're trying to endure to the end. It's going to make, it's going to piss off a lot of people. But it's going to help a lot of people too. Because if you don't get delivered, how can somebody else get delivered? How can you help somebody else? Excuse me, I was tormented for years. With this jealousy spirit. Years. Cut it. Cut it. Because they will hold you up, they will delay you, they will, they will deny, they will do malicious things to you in order for you not to obtain it. They will make a mockery of you, they will make fun of you, they will, I mean, they will, they it's it's the influence is bad. I'm serious. In order to hold you up. They will hold you up and put their foot on your neck so that you stay in the same situation that they're in. So that you never progress. So that you never successful. They'll put their feet on your neck. In order to, for you to be in the same state that they're in. So y'all can be there together. People are nuts. Because they're sick. Because Satan has injected them with his poison. It's possible for any of us to have it. If we're not careful, the Bible says, even the very elect of us shall be deceived. So we have to work it out, you guys. We have to work it out. I love you guys with the love of Christ. I'm going to tell y'all what thus said the Lord. I don't care who it is. It could be the people on the job. It could be the, the boss at the job. For whatever reason, they find jealousy and they don't like you. Suck it up. Cut them off. Cut your losses and move on. Get rid of them. Because if you do not, they're going to kill you. They're going to kill you. They're going to hold you up and hold you back. Get rid of them. I don't care who it is. Parents can be that way with their children. Children can be that way with their parents. And they want to make their life a living hell. Because they just, because they, they parents have went and established themselves and they don't want to do anything with themselves. Now they feel some self-entitlement that their parents got to be, um, uh, uh, um, cater to their every beck and call. And, and, and they feel some, some self-entitlement because they, their children, that they have to do blah, 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 this and then the third. It kills you. And then you find yourself in what? Bondage. You find yourself what? In slavery. I'm telling y'all what God loves. And I never went through it. I wouldn't have been able to tell you that. Cut, cut it. Cut it. I know some people don't want to hear that, but cut it. You're going to have to or you're going to die there. You're going to have to or you're going to delay your journey with the father there. You're going to have to. Or you're never going to obtain what God has for you there. Because now you have been um, 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 enslaved to them. And their manipulation. Uh-huh. Their entanglement. Get out of it. You have to cut your ties sometimes. The Bible says, Who is my mother and my father? My sisters and my brothers. I'm emphasizing I'm paraphrasing. Who? Except for those that do the will of my father. We can no longer look at people and say, oh, this is who they are. No. Who are you in, in the inside? 
The Bible says he will not have us ignorant, but he will reveal all things to us. The Holy, that's what the Holy Spirit come to do. I know that might not be what people want to hear, but there it go. Whoop, there it is. And they will always try to come back and see if the door is still open for them to be able to manipulate you, to be able to in, in, inject their poison in you. And then you start feeling guilty, and then you start blah, 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 and then you find yourself bowing down. You find yourself worshiping them. So they have became your God now because you worry about pleasing them so that they don't miss, so that they like you, so that they don't mistreat you, so that they understand that, you know, you know, you ain't trying to act like you all that and this and that and the third. Listen, y'all. I had a family member tell me that. Whenever I would say no, when they would ask me something, I would say no. Oh, you think you, you just think you all that, don't you? You make me sick. You just think you all that. You know what? You know, and listen, and let me tell you this. You got to be careful about telling your business. You got to be careful about telling all your business. I don't know who this is for today, but you got to be careful about telling all your business because when they get mad at you, you don't do something that they want you to do. This is how they control you. Is they going to tell all your business. Yeah, I remember ba 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 ba. Oh no, I know when he did this and so, this and so. Uh huh. They're going to tell all your business. And they've been doing it for years. I'm giving you what God. I'm not doing this today. Because I know y'all get it. I'm not doing this today. I'm just not. Because I know you get it. Keep it to yourself. And a lot of times it's better to be by yourself than to have, than to have company. They always come. They always come as a help. They always come as a help. They always come as, oh, I'm, I'm coming to help you. They always come as, um, uh, I'm adding to your life. But really, they come to take away from your life. I'm telling y'all what God loves. This is not me. I'm telling y'all what the Holy Spirit is telling me. It could be a friend. It could be um, somebody you just met. It could be family. It could be somebody you married to. It could all, it, listen, y'all, I'm telling you, this thing's so subtle. Who was the the Bible said that Satan he beguiled the woman? Why? With deception, he came in so subtle. He held a conversation with her. He befriended her, and she held a conversation with him. And then he changed her way of thinking. What the father had already told her. He said, you shall, you shall not, you ain't going to die. He just don't want you to eat none of it. He just don't want you to, uh, he don't want your eyes to be open. He just, you know, trying to keep something, keep you away from it. I'm, listen, y'all, I'm telling y'all what God love. You got to be careful about those people that you meet. I don't care on social media or whatever. Because they going to always come to, they, they come to help. They come to give out so much help. And at the same time, they working witchcraft. At the same time, they trying to they working a, a a spell on you, to hold you up, to delay you, to destroy you, to kill you. Why? Because they want what you. They want the very thing that God has placed on your life. I'm telling you this. I ain't saying this for nothing. Wait on God. Wait on God. You got to know when it when when is when it's authentic, authentic when it is a counterfeit. We got to know that. So I love you guys with the love of Christ. I'm gonna tell you what thus said the Lord. And also some people gonna don't like me. I know that. I have thus and so x amount of thousands of people on my page, and I know some of them don't like me. And I have some of them that is waiting to. They snakes waiting whoop, so they can do that. I know this. I'm not worried. It's some people, it's, it's some friendship I had to reject. 
I got the invite. I was summoned. And it's something I had to reject. Because I had to have the wisdom of God to know what was authentic. What was counterfeit. Who is this is coming with all this help? Who is this? What is behind the mask? What is behind the motive? What is behind the words? Because listen, if God, the Bible says that they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. If they do the father like that, who am I? Who are you? If they do the father like that, who are you? You better know who these people are. Let me tell y'all this. I knew a girl one time. I knew this lady, young girl. This many, many years ago, many, many years ago. And uh, I was in the world at the time, you know. And uh, I went serving God how I should, how I'm doing now. I wasn't serving God like that. I had a love. I had a love for God. I just I wasn't doing right. So I had a form of godliness. I was going to church, you know, I was doing the ritual, you know, I would take out some time, you know, when he was, you know, I strike out, of, you know, I'm, I'm going to church now. And it was um at a season, things was getting ready to shift in my life. And I had befriended this girl and I didn't know who she was, but me and my sister was the type of, 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 of people. If you befriended us, you said you was our friend, you was our friend. We rhyme with you. That's, that's what you say. That's what's up. And... We couldn't see it at first. And I remember one day that I was in the house. I was upstairs and I think I was packing because I was getting ready to move and all kind of stuff. And when she came in my house, she put on my shoes. You know, the little flip flops. She put on, she slid them on her feet, took off her shoes. Do you hear me? Took off her shoes and put my shoes on. And she started to walk around in my shoes. And she was like, ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh yeah. Ooh, yeah. Like, looking down at her feet. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And at the time, I'm so dumb. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm not in God. So I'm blind. I don't know. And somebody came and told me that this, this girl here was uh, working um, um, witchcraft. And that she was a false prophetess. And I said, I did not know that. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't back away from the relationship immediately right then. But I said, I'm going to watch it for myself and see what's going on. Now that I, somebody that came and told me the business. So I went to church with her one night. And she's supposed to have been the speaker at this church somewhere. And I guess she was trying to recruit people to herself. And uh, so I guess I was down for the campaign pretty much because I was the only one with her really. And so I went to church with her one night. And she's supposed to have got up to speak. This is how I'm trying to tell y'all about these tongues. They're not real. Some of these tongues ain't real, baby. And you need the spirit of God. If you don't have the spirit of God, you lost. In this these last days, you don't have the spirit, you're going to be lost. You don't have the spirit, you're going to be deceived. You don't have the spirit of God in you. Anyway, she got up there and she went to singing. And then she started the utter... These tar, I say, these are not real. I say, oh, wow. The light clicked on. And I say, it's real. It is just what they say it is. Wow, I couldn't believe it. And God revealed it to me. Instantly. Oh, I, I come. I'm a great woman of God. I, they come in the name of the... Listen, y'all. They come in the name. They come in his name. Did he say in his Bible? I'm trying not to get excited, y'all. Did, did he say in the Bible that many will say in that day, judgment day, many will say, Did we cast out devils in your name? Did we heal the sick in your name? Did we do many, many miracles in your name? And he's going to say, Depart from me because I never knew you. I've been saying this and saying this and saying this and saying this and saying this. Don't be them. Be different. They come in the name of the Father. They come in the name of Jesus Christ to do good. 
But inside, they're wolves. She took off her shoes to put on my shoes. And I wasn't even in God. Y'all didn't hear me. I wasn't even in God. I was not in God. I was not in God like I am now. I was not in God. But the gifts and callings that God has placed on your life, when he has called you, baby, you will fulfill the will of the Father by any means necessary. I was not in God. And whatever she was picking up with having my shoes on, baby, it was satisfying her. God took me back and made me remember that day in the room. I said, that's what she was doing. I just finished telling y'all, do not take off your shoes. The gospel of peace, we got shoes. Our feet shot with the preparation of the peace of the gospel. Don't take your shoes off. I just thank God for being God. I just thank God for being God. I thank him for being long patient with me. I thank him for, listen y'all, because I ain't always been here. I ain't always did it right. But I thank him for his grace and his mercy. I thank him for the covering. He's my only covering. I don't care what the pastors have preached. I don't care what the I don't care what they say. I don't care what tradition and religion say. My Bible tells me that Jesus Christ is my covering. Not the pastor. He don't have that type of power. Not the apostle. He don't have that type of power. Not the prophetess. She don't have that type of power. Not the prophet. They don't have that type of power. Jesus Christ. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for the blood that was shed on the cross for my sins. I thank him. He's a keeper. He's a promise keeper. I thank him. But anyway, whatever she was feeling in the shoes, it was satisfying her. God is so good. Y'all, it's just so much I can't tell it all. Know those. You got to know them. In order to know them, you're going to have to have the spirit of God. They're going to come in peace. They're going to come in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I come to help. Ooh, I come to help. I'm, you know, I'm a work of God. And you're supposed to believe it. Test the spirit by the spirit and see if it's of God. You're going to piss a lot of folks off. So? Mm -hmm. So, you're going to make a lot of people mad. So, you're going to help a lot of people too. Do the will of the Father. So, anyway, I want to keep going on, y'all. That's what I had to say. They're going to say all manner of things. I'm a lone ranger out here. I'm a lone ranger, and I don't care. Because my Bible tells me John was too. Paul was too. All of them was until God brought in a divine connection. Elijah was too. Until God brought the divine connection. Who was Elijah's divine connection? Elisha. God told him, get up and go anoint Elisha. Get up and go anoint um, uh, um, Jabez. Get up and go and anoint blah, blah, blah. To set the stage for them to do the work. I'm a lone ranger out here. I don't care. I'm a lone ranger out here. Until God send my divine connection. That's the way I'm going to stay. I know where I come from. And see, baby, I come from uh, jacking them up and, and, and uh, pistol toting. I come from, I come from a war, from a fight. I'm in another fight. And I got to be so careful. Because people will do some things to you, baby, that hell you flip the strip. What what Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Know them that are among you. If you feel it, you know it's there. Envy and jealousy, it goes together. Envy and strife and jealousy, it goes together. If they jealous, they got envy in them. If they got envy in them, they got strife in them. If they got strife in them, they gossipers. If they, they got hell in them, get away from them. They gossip. They tell all your business. Get away from them. 
Anyway, that's it. Let me go. Let me go in this store. I love y'all. I'll see y'all a little bit later on, and I might be together then, y'all. I'm in my rare form today, y'all. I'm just, I'm tired. Anyway, I love you with the love of Christ. Brother Dana, I love you. Y'all have a good day. Thank you for watching. I just wanted to come on and say I love you guys, okay? Y'all have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.